What's up YouTube? Have you wanted to have a tour of the brand new Affinity and find out where everything is in there? Well, that's what we're here to do today. Welcome back, my name is Ben. I'm a media design educator, and today we are taking a tour of the new Affinity program. This is the one with the green logo. This is the one where they combined the existing three Affinity programs, which were Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher into one program. And each of those three applications was turned into a separate studio within the single Affinity program. Now we've been talking a lot about this lately, so I wanna give you a full tour of it. Now, this video is actually part of my brand new course, which is Intro to Affinity, and in that course, we use all three studios and learn how they work together to create a final designed document. So if you want to take that course, make sure you drop down in the description and click the link. Now that course is available both on Skillshare and on Gumroad. So if you subscribe to Skillshare, take it there. If you don't, then go ahead and get it on Gumroad. And remember, when you're on Gumroad, use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in and see what's going on in the new affinity. All right, so here we are. We have landed inside of the new affinity. And what we are looking at now is kind of the layout here. And we are looking at what we're going to do during this course. So we are going to be creating this takeout menu. And you can see that I've done a bunch of iterations on this. This is how design works. You iterate and you iterate and you iterate in order to refine your design. And you want to make sure that you save those iterations. This is made really easy in affinity by being able to duplicate your artboard or your page. So I just duplicate this and then I make adjustments as we go and that allows me to see where I've come from So let's take a tour around the space. So you kind of know where you're at here All right, we're going to start up in the top left now. I'm on a Mac So here on a Mac I have my colored dots to close a window minimize a window or expand a window Okay, that's what you've got there and you can see that it pops up and shows you different options. Here you have the Affinity logo, which you can pop open to see kind of the welcome menu that you would have seen when you first came into it. You can see that there's different documents here, images that we're working on, and then you've got your welcome to Affinity things down here as well. All right, we can X out of that. And now up here at the top, we have what are now called the studios. So the studios are what used to be in the old Affinity personas. So right now we have a vector studio, a pixel studio, and a layout studio. And we are going to use all three of these in order to accomplish our designs here. Now, you may also see the Canva AI studio. If you click on this three dot menu, you can see that I have turned off Canva AI because you only have access to those tools if you pay for the premium Canva subscription, which I don't have. So I have this turned off. You can see there are a couple of other pre-made studios, Slice, retouching, color grading, and you can turn those on if you need to. And there's also create a studio. So you can customize this to be exactly what you want, exactly what you need, which is pretty cool. So those are the studios up top. And every time you change, you're going to see that things adjust a little bit. Things don't stay exactly the same between studios because it's changing the tools and the panels that you have access to. All right, now here you have a couple of options for your view mode. You have vector view mode and you have pixel view mode. So depending on whether you're working with vectors or pixels, you can switch between this. You also turn on pixel view mode when you wanna make sure that you're getting something pixel perfect for playing on screen. So you wanna know exactly what it's going to look like in pixels you can turn on your pixel view mode. Then along the top, we also have some other features. So there are a bunch of quick menu items over here on the top right. These are things that you might need to use regularly. And you'll see that those change when I change my studio. So those are different in each studio and those can also be customized. Well, then right below that we have what's called the contextual toolbar. The contextual toolbar changes depending on what tool you have selected. So our tools are all on the left hand side. So right now I'm on this one. This is the move tool. And if you hover over anything in the new affinity, it will give you a nice detailed view of what that tool is. If I switch to my artboard tool, this up here in the contextual toolbar above is going to change what settings are available to me because there are different settings for each tool. So again, the node tool is going to have different settings. They're all going to have different settings. Let's go back to the move tool. And the contextual toolbar for the move tool is also changing depending on what you have selected. So right now I have the text box selected. This will change if I select an image instead. If I select an image, I'm no longer going to have my font options and things like that. So this is really important because you need to understand that if you change your tool, you might not see the option you were used to and you might not have realized that you changed tool. You might not consciously have been thinking about that. And so 
make sure that if you feel like you're missing an option, that you check what tool you're on. That can help with a lot of frustration when you're first getting used to a program like this. So that's the left-hand side. On the far right-hand side, we have what are called the panels. Now, panels come in all different kinds, and these help you deal with the details of your project, things like your color, your text, they're here. So right now, I'm in the stroke panel, which helps me deal with the outlines, and the layers panel, which helps me deal with the way my layers are stacking on top of each other. And I'm in the transform panel, which helps me deal with the size and position of my shapes. So there's lots and lots of different things here. And I just wanna show you what will happen if I accidentally grab my layers panel and I drag it out. This can float on top. Now that's really cool because you can position it where you want, but if you get frustrated with that and you accidentally click the X because you think that will put it back it won't, it disappears. And a lot of people can become very concerned about this because they're worried, where did that go and how will I ever get it back? So I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to come up to the window menu and then you've got panels and this is just showing which panels show and hide, but then you have different panels here, okay? So these are actually the panels underneath. And if you look, you're going to see a bunch of different ones. So under general, I can find layers, okay? So I pop that back, it goes exactly back to where I had it the last time. And if I want to add it back into my docked layers on the right-hand side, I'm just going to click and drag that over here and pop it right back where it was before. No big deal, we're all set. So that's kind of the layout here. There's one other thing, you will get some information down here in the very bottom. There's a little bar down at the very bottom, I'm circling with my mouse, and that will give you some information. It can give you some help information. Okay, so it's talking about picture frame, that's what's selected, telling you how to utilize it. All right, it also shows what page you're on. So there's a few things there, warnings can also appear here. So just know that that's another little area that people sometimes forget about. So that's the basics here in Affinity. That is how everything is laid out by default. It can be customized a lot though. There's a lot of customization that can go into it. And just so you kind of know, like when you change, like if I change to layout here, I get a new panel on the left-hand side, which is my pages panel. That's more useful in layout than it is in vector. So that's why that pops up here and you might need it a lot. So it pops up on the left-hand side instead of popping up in the right-hand side. Of course, I could grab it, I could drag it, and I could bring it over here too. For those of us who used Affinity Publisher before, it's very comfortable to have it on the left-hand side, so that's where it is by default. Okay, so now you've kind of seen where we're going and you know kind of what the layout of the program is. All right, I hope you enjoyed seeing what's going on in the new Affinity and you have a better idea for where different things are at and how they work now. Now remember, this is part of my full new course, the Intro to Affinity. So if you wanna take that course, drop down in the description below and click the links. You can take it either on Skillshare or on Gumroad. If you use Gumroad, make sure you use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. And I wanna hear from you. Have you started using the new Affinity yet? What do you think about it? Are you enjoying it or are you finding it difficult? We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.